right, we're gonna make this really easy for you today. We're cooking back strap. We're not gonna try to take some piece of venison that's tough or chewy or something that might be intimidating for you to cook. We're gonna take the best cut on the deer besides the inner loins, but the cut that everybody's after, the back strap. We're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna use a dry rub. We're gonna pan sear it, finish it off in the oven to medium rare, and cover it with sauteed mushrooms and onions. So pour yourself a drink, and let's make some dinner or lunch, because it's only like 11 o'clock in the morning, but you know, I'm doing YouTube videos, so what an excuse to drink, huh? So we've gone ahead and thawed out the back strap in the refrigerator overnight, we've taken out the package and we pad dried it. All we're gonna do is apply a dry rub. Now a dry rub, pretty much you can pick whatever you want. Try to add some type of element of salt, pepper, and then any other spice that you can imagine that you like. For the dry rub that we're using today, we're using a quarter cup of salt, one tablespoon of black pepper, two teaspoons onion powder, two teaspoons garlic powder, three tablespoons brown sugar, two teaspoons smoked paprika, one teaspoon chili powder, and then one teaspoon of cinnamon. So all you wanna do is take your dry rub and apply it liberally. Anything that comes off to the side, just leave it fall off because you can roll it in it. One thing I would suggest if you're using a brown sugar for dry rub, put it out on a plate, let it dry out a little bit, otherwise it clumps up with the rest of the dry rub. This is a thick piece of meat and your seasoning is only gonna be on the outside. So you wanna make sure you apply a liberal amount So pretty easy. So now all we're gonna do is heat the oil in the pan and pan sear every single side of this piece of meat. So you wanna get this oil heated up pretty well, almost to the point to where it's smoking. You don't wanna burn it. If you're gonna use butter to do this, you definitely don't wanna burn the butter, otherwise it's gonna give it a bitter taste. Get it super hot to the point where you put that meat on, it's starting to sizzle, and you can start to sear each side rather quickly. Continue to let it cook, almost to the point where it's burning. There's times where you'll turn it over and you think it's burnt, but once you're done with it in the oven, it's gonna leave this, it's gonna leave this perfectly crisp crust. So while you're pan searing the meat, you want to preheat your oven to 425. So you want to pan sear each side approximately two minutes. Now don't just do each side. You want to make sure that you're getting the edges and the ends to sear in all the juices of that piece of meat. So we're gonna remove this from the heat. I didn't use a cast iron skillet. I'm actually gonna use like a lasagna dish to finish it off in the oven. So when it comes to checking your meat and seeing if it's done enough, I'm sure many of you have heard of the way how you can tell that by using your hand. Specifically using the pad of your thumb. So the pad of your thumb, if you touch it, it's pretty soft. That's gonna be pretty much raw meat. This is gonna be rare. Touch the pad of your thumb. This is gonna be medium rare, this is gonna be medium, and this is gonna be well done. Now if you're checking your meat like this, it's over. You might as well cut off your pinky because you don't need it when it comes to cooking venison. So you wanna be somewhere in here. But honestly, we're gonna finish this off in the oven, so we're not gonna to wanna to keep opening up the oven to check to see if the meat is done. So if you got the means, I highly suggest that you go out and get one of these temperature probes. 
That way we know exactly when our meat is gonna be ready to take out of the oven. We're not gonna to have to mess around and open up the grill or open up the oven to keep continually losing heat in the receptacle that we're cooking it in just to see if the meat is done. With a temperature gauge, there is no guesswork. We're gonna put this in, get it up to about 132, 133 degrees, knowing that when we take it out, that the temperature is gonna to continue to rise just a little bit, and it's a protein, so it's gonna to continue to cook over the next five to 10 minutes as we let it rest. So now you wanna take your meat thermometer and you wanna insert the probe. Yeah, I said probe. You wanna go lengthwise through the meat. You don't wanna go vertically because you're gonna get different temperature readings throughout the entirety of the meat. You're gonna have more well done meat on the outside at the top and the bottom. So you wanna to try to go lengthwise through the meat. Now we put just a few pieces of butter on the top to kind of base the meat as it continues to complete in the oven. So we're gonna pop it in the oven and look for a temperature of approximately 133 degrees, expecting it to rise when we let it rest. So this is going to take approximately five minutes to cook before you let it rest 10 minutes outside of the oven. It's a perfect opportunity to start cutting up your onions and your mushrooms and sauteing them for the coverings. Right, so our meat's reached its internal temperature of 133 degrees. We're gonna take it out and let it rest for 10 minutes. So you don't need it, but one thing we're gonna do is take the mushrooms and onions, deglaze the pan after we sear them up a little bit, and create a little red wine reduction sauce. So we're using red wine today. You can use the wine that's been in your fridge for three months because I don't drink wine unless I'm cooking with it. You can use Boone's Farm, you can use whatever you want. I prefer whiskey. All right, all we're gonna do is hit the pan with just a little bit of red wine. We're gonna throw in just a little bit of butter to harden it up. So we're gonna let that cook off for about one to two minutes and then cut up the meat. All right, now for the moment of truth. End cap's gonna probably be a little bit done more than the rest of it. You can see a perfect medium to medium rare. Absolutely perfect. All right, we're gonna plate this up. Put some, some of our sauteed mushrooms and onions over the top. Not needed though. All right, so I got a full drink. I don't really drink a lot when I eat, especially while I'm gaming. I don't know, but I'm cooking, so I'll usually drink when I cook, but I don't really drink much when I'm eating. Now with this, I'm not a wine connoisseur, but maybe a red wine with the red meat. So I've got a knife, but let's just check. Knife's not needed. Really not. Hmm. Let's put the knife down. Like I said before, you don't really need the, the 
with mushrooms and onions, but if you have a friend that eats steak, they tell you they like steak, but they don't like venison, and you make this for them, they're gonna love it. If they don't, they're liars. They don't eat steak then. So the point is with this is just let the meat do the talking. You don't need to wrap it in bacon. You don't need to inject it with cream cheese or jalapenos. If it's a backstrap, baby, that's all you need. Now I'll say this, say you cook it to medium rare and you've cooked a full piece of meat that maybe the guests that you have over don't want medium rare meat. The easiest way to do it is still cook it the way you, we just did. Take your slice of meat, get your pan super hot, and just quickly sear each side on it. It's gonna cook it just a little bit more so you can get it more to that medium, kind of borderline medium well. So cook it full and then cut it and then finish it off to people's desired doneness. That's it. That's the easiest way to do a back strap. It really is. You don't have to get fancy. Dry rub with your favorite seasonings. Pan sear. Finish it off in the oven. Let it rest for 10 minutes. Pour yourself a drink and enjoy.